Hello, greetings, salutations, all that good stuff. Tim Warner here again, continuing our journey on the new Microsoft Azure certifications. In this installment, I'm going to go over the different question types that you'll see on the exams. Therefore, you already know our objective, just a single one. I want to work with you to evaluate how Microsoft assesses your Azure knowledge on these new cert exams. If you're thinking, Tim, what are these Azure cert exams? Just check elsewhere here in my YouTube channel. My first video of this mini-series covers the new Azure certification program. Now, the screenshots that you see in this video are taken from Microsoft Learning's YouTube channel, and if you're interested in looking at that channel, you can take a look at this bit.ly short URI that I made for you. It's timw.info forward slash MSL. Okay, let's get right into it here. The multiple choice question is a baseline way to assess knowledge, isn't it? What do I want you to know about multiple choice items on the new Azure exams? One thing is that the multiple answer multiple choice, you're not going to see choose all that apply. That's really a poor way to assess somebody's knowledge. If there's two correct answers, then the item stem will explicitly say which two of the following choices are relevant. You see in this example item that the radio button control is used. This prevents you actually from selecting more than one answer. For multiple answer, multiple choice questions, instead of the radio button, it's the checkbox control. And the exam engine will not allow you to proceed if you haven't answered the correct number of items. Now, this is called a repeated answer multiple choice, and you'll most likely see these on your new Azure tests. As the note says here, they, by they, I mean Microsoft, gives you the same item stem, but the solution is different. And you're asked to evaluate whether that solution meets the goal or what. It's just a different way. Instead of a multiple choice item where you've got, say, one correct answer and one standalone scenario per item, this is just a different way, in my experience, to stretch out an item. Now, the thing to remember about the repeated answers where you have the same item stem for a handful of questions is that you cannot move back and forth among these. And that's because you might find that in the subset of items, you'll realize when you get to question three what the answer to one is. And if you could move back and forth, that isn't fair. So just be prepared for this take on multiple choice items. You'll also find when you're looking at answer choices in your multiple choice items that Microsoft never references non-existent technology. So you'll find that the answer choices are all plausible. They reference actual technology and actual options. And that's a good thing because it's a red herring and a poor way to assess knowledge, in my humble opinion, to write an incorrect choice called a distractor in the industry that references something bogus. That's just as worthless, in my opinion. Now, the case study tends to throw people for a loop unless you've taken Microsoft exams in the past and you've seen this format. The idea here is that you're essentially role playing. Although you may find these case studies on the administrator and developer exams, I always consider case studies more of a solution architect way to evaluate knowledge. You should know that case studies are not timed separately. So you have your single countdown timer in the upper right there that ticks down from the beginning of your exam to your end. So you want to budget time properly. I will cover specific strategies for tackling case studies in a separate video. Here I'm just giving you the high level overview. Another point is that you cannot return to the section. After you finish the case study questions and you click proceed, you can never return. Now you can add comments and give Microsoft feedback on the case study, but you can't change your answers. So what you have here is it's kind of like the previous example of the, re the repeated answer multiple choice because the case study represents the fixed item stem. And then you'll have a handful of questions that all point back to the same case. The idea of the case study is that it's a fictional business and you're looking at their environment and their different sets of requirements. As you can see here, you navigate among the different case study components by using this control. And then there's a separate tab for question. And like I said, there's going to be a small subset of questions that point back to the case. The case study is not intended to be a reading comprehension exercise. Instead, it's meant to assess your real world ability to look at business use cases and map those to the appropriate Azure products and features.
Build List has been around in Microsoft exams for a long time. It's one of many what are called interactive items. Build List is a way for Microsoft to verify that you understand procedures. This becomes especially important for the AZ100 series exams that cover administration because there you are concerned with having to know, for instance, what are the step-by-step -step procedures for adding a custom domain to your Azure AD tenant, for example. You'll see in the item stem for build list items which X actions, which four actions should you perform in sequence, you see. So there's not going to be that problem of did I choose all of the correct options? Yes, it'll tell you which number of items to perform. This item's pretty cool because it tests not only your ability to choose the task steps, but then rearrange them in the proper sequence. Know that Microsoft does give partial credit, so if you chose all of the correct options but had them in an incorrect order, you'll still get partial credit for that item. Just make sure you don't give up and leave the question unanswered or it's 100% incorrect. You can move the actions from the left to the right using the mouse, or you can select them and use these arrow controls as you see here. I prefer drag and drop myself. Speaking of which, drag and drop is another old interactive item type. It's essentially a concept matching exercise where you have a number of choices on one side of the screen and you have to match them up to the appropriate property or whatever the item talks about on the right side of the screen. It's pretty bread and butter, actually. I want to draw your attention to the user interface of the exam engine. See these ellipses? There's, in this case, horizontal and vertical grab bars, and you can resize the split between the interactive part of the screen and the item stem and question part of the screen by using those controls. And depending upon how large the monitor is at your test center, you may indeed need to use the split bar a lot. For instance, here in Nashville, Tennessee, I go to a Pearson View testing center that's within walking distance of my office. And if it weren't within walking distance, I wouldn't go there because they have really small, cheap monitors. I need to talk to them about that, actually, because it makes seeing all of the item contents challenging, to be honest. Honest. Active screen are hot areas where Microsoft presents, say, part of a user interface. It could be part of the Azure portal, for instance, or it's a script extract. Maybe you're seeing part of an Azure policy, an Azure resource manager template, or just an Azure PowerShell file. And you have the ability to fill in the blank, for instance. You see in this example, it shows some kind of user interface with a drop-down list control, and the item requires that you open the control and choose the correct item. You might, for instance, be given a screen full of JavaScript object notation, JSON, and periodically there'll be drop-down lists where you need to choose the proper element name. Same thing for Azure PowerShell. Hands-on lab. Now, this is something, this notion of Microsoft wanting to test that you actually can perform work with their products has been in their exams since, wow, just about as long as I've been in the industry. I remember back in the late 90s taking a Microsoft exam on Internet Information Services, IIS. Back then it was called Internet Information Server. And that was the first Microsoft exam where I saw simulations, where Microsoft would present a mock-up of, say, the IIS Management Console, and you needed to click through to perform tasks. And only some of the simulation was active. If you clicked other items, they just would be dead. Well, with Azure, it's pretty difficult to do that kind of item. So what we have is a connection to a live virtual machine. You're asked to complete a handful of tasks in the portal, this is not a simulation. You're actually logging in via RDP to the Azure portal using a Microsoft provided identity. And then, as I said, you're given a number of tasks to complete. Now, again, I'll have more to say about strategy in future videos, but here I just want to say again, to perform due diligence and research the Pearson View Testing Center or centers that are near where you are and check out what kinds of monitors they have in their testing room. Because if you have a small, cheap CRT monitor like that's in my local testing center, you may have problems completing these hands-on labs because if you can't see all of the browser window in your screen, well, it just, you run into some user interface problems. I've actually filed an issue with Pearson View directly about that, and I'll update on Twitter if I hear anything that I can share with you. So our next step, or your next step for homework, I want to remind you the importance as you prepare for your Azure exams to invest in quality exam simulation software. 
And one that I recommend is MeasureUp.com, not only because they're an official practice test provider, but because MeasureUp exams are simulations of the live test that have all of the different item types there. And you'll have an opportunity not only to practice your skills and knowledge, but also to get comfortable with these different item types. So what subject do you want me to cover next? I've given you some tips and tricks and suggestions that I'm going to cover in future videos. But if you have anything additional to add, you know the drill. Add comments here in my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. Thanks a lot for your time. Happy studying. Take care.